Hello again, and now joining us from Google, Alan Name is a senior manager with the Google Kubernetes Engine Product Management Team focused on Google Cloud's open services platform, enabling enterprise teams to build modern cloud native architectures. Ladies and gentlemen, Alan Name. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So before I get started, uh, I'd like to do a quick show of hands. How many people here are familiar with uh, Kubernetes? And of you people, how many are actually running Kubernetes in production? Okay, what about containers in general? Anybody running containers? Very cool. So my talk today is going to cover uh, Google's vision and strategy around open services, and uh, I hope it'll be very useful for you. So when you look at openness in the industry, let's, let's kind of rewind to uh, the late 90s and early 2000s, where there was a tremendous mix of uh, proprietary client-side technologies that existed, right? You had technologies like Flash, Shockwave, Java applets, different proprietary renderers for the browser, and it was very difficult for developers to actually build anything that can run on different browsers, and depending on what application you're running or website you went to, it was kind of messy, right? So the industry got together and really uh, built out a, a standard, really adopted a standard around HTML5. And HTML5 is a bunch of great standards around HTML, JavaScript, and custom style sheets. And that enabled the industry to really accelerate and move forward in an unleashed growth around uh, building very rich client applications that can run on any browser. So you might be sitting here and wondering, why is he talking about client-side technologies? What is this related with Google and Cisco? So the same thing that, that happened back in the late 90s and early 2000s around this transformation with client technologies is happening today with back-end technologies and back-end services, right? In, in the digital economy, in this new software economy that we're in, right? We need to be able to build services and applications that can run anywhere. We need to be able to build portable applications. Nobody really wants lock-in. And this is really what's unleashed the explosive growth of containers and Kubernetes. Um, Kubernetes in particular is becoming the cloud operating system because it enables both developers, admins, and operators to run, manage, and operate applications consistently in multiple heterogeneous environments. So we're living in very exciting times. Now, as we look at cloud evolution over the last couple of decades, we notice um, you know, th there's a pattern. There's a pattern that consists of four drivers that are really repeating themselves as we look at every evolution cycle, right? From the monolith in the data center to hardware virtualization to the mode one cloud of infrastructure as a service and public cloud to where we are today at, at really the cusp of the, the cloud native mode two way of doing things. And those drivers are really, they're very simple, right? And they're very repetitive. Number one is how do you reduce cost, right? Number two is how do you make things simple, right? How do you remove the complexity? Number three is how do you move fast? And number four is really about better visibility into actually what's running in order to mitigate the risks and deal with all the regulations and regulators that are, um, that are really pushing in, in our industry today. So, where we are today with the cloud native Mo2 world looks a little bit different from the experiences that we had in the evolution cycles in the past. Number one, the Mo2 world, the cloud native services world, is all based on open source. There's no lock-in, it's portable. And this is the vision that Google is driving forward that makes this shift feel similar, but it looks much different from what we've been experienced in the last two decades. 
So IDC did a recent study and 43% of all IT budgets will actually go towards cloud procurement. But that cloud procurement is not a single cloud. It is multiple clouds. Some of it will go towards hybrid clouds. Some of it will go towards public clouds. Some of it will go towards you know, specialized clouds. So it's very important to be able to support all these various environments without having to use 20 different tools. Now, this slide says it all, right? Hybrid is an enterprise reality, but hybrid is a very hard problem. It's not trivial. There's a reason why in today's world, a lot of applications haven't moved to the public cloud, right? They have to remain on-prem. So as you look at this slide, I'm sure you're asking, there's a lot of moving pieces here. We all want to be in the top right, right? We all have aspirations and taking applications and running them in the public cloud. There's certain cases where we may not want to. We want to run applications in our data centers or in certain regions around the world where you, know, you have to operate within country boundaries. But at Google, we are very much focused on providing you the tools and the services to be able to run your application anywhere in this quadrant. Whether you want to lift and shift a VM to the public cloud, or you want to take an application that's currently running in your data center and modernize it in place, and eventually, over time, move it to the cloud. Or take an application, containerize it, and shift it into the cloud. Or containerize it in the cloud. We'll meet you where you are, and we'll give you a path to go anywhere in this quadrant. So Google, over the past three years, has invested $30 billion in improving our infrastructure. We've built the most secure cloud on the planet. We have 15 regions that we operate our cloud in around the globe, and we're adding four new regions this year. As far as our network, over the past 18 years, we built the largest network on the planet. Some statistics that I've looked at state that we serve 20 to 25 percent of the entire internet's traffic. There's 100,000 miles of fiber optic cable and 11 undersea cables that we've, we've built. There are three independent routes between any two points on the Google network to provide N plus two resiliency. So we've built a cloud that really differentiates itself and enables you to run your most secure applications. And today we have thousands of customers that are using Google Cloud all around the world. Our vision is really to help you address the following use cases. We're not coming to you and saying, give us your workload, run it in our cloud. What we're saying is we want to address your real world use cases that can help you move to the cloud at your own pace. Whether you want to consume a mainframe or some legacy application running in your data center from the public cloud, or you want to be able to build your application in the cloud and run it anywhere, whether it's on Google or on-prem. Perhaps you want to train your models in the cloud and run them in the edges. Maybe you have requirements around jurisdiction that you'd like to build your application in the cloud, but then you want to put it in certain areas where there is no cloud data center, where you're forced to run it in a country boundary, but you don't want to have to rewrite your application. You know, perhaps you'd like to be able to consume cloud services from your on-prem environment in such a way where you don't have to deal with identity and all the complexities associated with consuming the cloud services, but you want to do it in a consistent fashion. Or maybe you want to burst from your on-prem environment into the public cloud, or have a multi-ingress load balancer to regions on the public cloud or, or, or on-premise. So those are all use cases that we're really, our vision is to be able to target and provide you with the tools that you need to address these. The key here is really around workload portability and, and, and consistency around your environment. So containers abstract away the underlying operating system, right? And this is why containers have been very popular. 
services provide you a unit of deployment and upgrade for your applications. As well, our goal is really to decouple the role of the developer and the role of the operator. A developer shouldn't have to write code that goes and deals with complexities around networking and operations and, 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 and identity. That should be decoupled. We want developers and operators and administrators to work very closely together, to provide value to each other, but not stand in the way of each other. So developers should be able to move at their own pace, but admins and operators should be able to define policy that specifies how the application is run in, from environment to environment. So our vision around open hybrid is composed of really three pillars. The first pillar, and these pillars are all based on open source technologies, including Kubernetes, Open Service Broker, and Istio. With Kubernetes, we're giving you a, a layer that sits on top of your infrastructure that enables you to build services and expose these services across heterogeneous environments, whether it's in the public cloud, on-premise or any cloud. And Google developed a managed Kubernetes implementation called Google Kubernetes Engine that's basically an API that enables you to spin up a Kubernetes cluster with one API call and run your applications in the cloud. Open Service Broker is really a way for providers, service providers and service consumers to consistently consume services across heterogeneous environments without having to worry about the semantics of consuming that service. So in this example, from your on-prem environment, you can consume a Google Cloud service without having to spin up a Google Cloud project or worry about the identity aspects of consuming that particular service. And then Istio is all about network policy, right? You want to be able to define traffic policy, uh, traffic management, uh, network segmentation, um, routing rules, around your traffic for your services without having to have a developer write code to basically define these traffic policies. You want to be able to do that as operators and administrators outside to enforce on how a developer's application runs in production. And that's all done through using Istio. So why are we here, right? We built this great partnership with Cisco uh, to enable you as, as customers, as partners, to build world-class um, world hybrid open services, distributed applications and environments. Kubernetes has been on fire over the last uh, couple years and what I hear from customers is the journey with Kubernetes is very well defined, it's easy to do in the cloud, but it's really hard getting up and running on-prem. It's also very hard to connect between on-prem and public cloud. How do you do that network connectivity and do it in a secure fashion? And the third area that customers come to us for is they want support, right? They don't want to deal with three different support entities, you know, one here, one there. They want a single support arm that they can call to get world-class support for their entire hybrid environment. And this is what Google and Cisco came together to build. And Kip Compton, in the talk following mine, will go into more detail around the partnership. But at the end of the day, Cisco is, and Google have engineered a solution that actually addresses everything that I mentioned in terms of use cases in the previous slides. Cisco has engineered a, a turnkey Kubernetes uh, platform called Cisco Container Platform. And Cisco Container Platform is really Kubernetes running on-prem that basically uh, abstracts away all the various complexities associated with um, compute, network, and storage so that you get an API just like you would in the cloud for running your containerized applications. Google Apigee is used to enable you to connect from the cloud to on-prem and consume uh, non-modern non type uh, interfaces like mainframes or non-REST type uh, interfaces. So it modernizes your endpoints so that you can consume them from the public cloud. 
open service broker is used to enable you to consume services from Google Cloud from your on-prem environment using a mechanism that we refer to as service catalog. And that's enabled through Cisco Container Platform. You have VPN connectivity enabled using Cisco CSR, both in your on-prem environment as well as enabled in Google Cloud Platform. You have Cisco StealthWatch that's integrated with Google Cloud VPC flows, so now you have end-to-end -end visibility into what's going on across your network from on-prem all the way to Google Cloud VPCs. And then you have Google Kubernetes Engine, which is Google's implementation of Kubernetes, 100% upstream Kubernetes, and very important to, uh, to highlight here is Google and Cisco worked very hard together so that Cisco Container Platform could be engineered with parity with Google Kubernetes Engine, so you're getting consistency from a configuration standpoint. And the goal here is so that you can use tools like Cisco Cloud Center to deploy your applications across these two different environments without having to change any code. And then Istio, which is a, uh, a very popular open source project around network policy, is an area where both Google and Cisco have been leaders in the community in, in pushing forward, especially Cisco has been investing quite a bit in the Istio community and Google has been involved in Istio uh, since day one. But the, the idea with Istio is once you've exposed these services using Kubernetes across these heterogeneous environments, now you can use Istio to manage them via policy, to specify segmentation around traffic, to specify um, load balancing across the different environments between your on-prem environment and your cloud environment. You know, the goal here is so that developers can just focus on writing code, and admins and operators can focus on specifying policy and building out the, the right operating model for the applications that you're running. So I mentioned this in the beginning, right? The goal between Cisco and Google is, is really to enable you to move at your own pace. We want you to be able to run a variety of workloads, some of which could be running on-prem, some of which could be running in the cloud. I'm sure you have applications that you're eventually looking to migrate to the cloud over the next few years, but we're not forcing you to take that application and move it to the cloud immediately to get the benefits of innovation and modernization. We want you to move at your own pace, modernize in place, take advantage of all these great open source technologies, cloud native technologies, be able to deploy them and run them consistently across the environments. That's our goal. So the idea is we're building together this next generation mode two hybrid cloud environment. You should be able to build your application once, whether it's on premise or in the cloud, and deploy it anywhere. And the key here is whatever you build and whatever you're deploying with the Google Cisco offering, you're getting support from the two leaders in the industry around Cisco bringing forward the networking and security leadership in the industry and Google bringing open source and developer innovation. So you're bringing all these two things together and you're getting a single entity from a support model to support you going down the path as you're moving into this mode two environment. To learn more about everything I've talked about, uh, please visit the uh, Embrace Multi-Cloud World Zone. Uh, the Google booth is just down that way. Uh, we have demos and videos that you can look at on some of the things I've been talking about. Kip's talk is coming up right after mine. Uh, in Kip's talk, you'll learn more about the Google Cisco partnership and the solution that we built together. Myself and Rohit Argawala are presenting tomorrow at two o'clock a PSO talk that is uh, going to really take everything that I talked about today, but bring it down to the level 300, level 400. We're even going to run through some live demos and show you all the various use cases that I've talked about, including um, on-prem to public cloud uh, service consumption. Please connect with us. Follow us on Google Cloud, and uh, that's my Twitter account. 
if you want to connect with me and, and keep up with all the cloud innovations that we're doing in Google, uh, send me a follow. Thank you very much, everyone. It's a robust policy framework and has been deployed in every major industry. It solves many critical enterprise problems, including establishing transport independent WAN for lower cost and higher diversity, ensuring SLA for business critical and real-time applications, providing end-to-end -end segmentation for protecting critical enterprise compute resources, extending the WAN seamlessly to public clouds, and providing optimal user experience for SaaS applications. Splunk's in the business of taking machine data and turning it into operational intelligence for our customers. The Cisco Network Assurance Engine will provide even richer set of data to those customers and allow customers to make better decisions using Splunk. Customers can visualize detailed network configurations and compliance issues in real time and easily correlate this data across their environment and continuously monitor their applications and performance across their infrastructure tiers. Automating these steps drastically reduces the cost of network operations and and allows IT teams to find and resolve issues faster. The combination of Cisco's Network Assurance Engine and Splunk allow organizations to proactively alert on potential performance, configuration, and compliance issues in the network. Eight years ago, the Domino's brand was stuck. Customers wanted an easier way to order pizza. They wanted convenience, simplicity. It was time for a new way of thinking. Domino's had a vision that they could use technology to better serve their customers. With help from Cisco, Domino's transformed itself from a pizza company to a technology company that sells great pizza. Cisco network infrastructure from the data center all the way down to the stores, helps Domino's ensure a consistent, reliable, and secure customer experience. Industry-leading data analytics provides insights into what customers want. And a world-class e-commerce platform makes it easy for customers to order from personal devices, social media, and home automation platforms. Today, Domino's is the second largest pizza chain in the world. More than 60% of their business comes from digital ordering. Their share price has soared over 1,000%, outpacing the world's most successful tech companies. Their e-commerce site is among the top 10 in the US, along with Amazon and Google, Domino's and Cisco. When it comes to delivering a superior customer experience, it's the perfect combination. can see my dreams coming true. And it's not just my dream, my teachers and classmates and students across the country and all over the world, we all share this dream of a world where we can build things, connect things and improve people's lives. I think a good student is someone who enjoys coming to learn. With Belle, she just wants to learn. She's dedicated to her work. She's committed to her work. So it's almost like it's natural for her. She just loves it. I think it's been easy for her. She might not say that, but that's what I'd say. I come from a family that values education. 
the reason my mom came to America was for a better educational opportunity for us. So I try my best to excel in school. Our Cisco Networking Academy program here at Laurel High School has given us a lot of opportunities to help students to matriculate between high school and attending college, which will better prepare them for the careers they choose later. I'm interested in doing biomedical engineering, and one of the aspects of that will probably have to do with programming. So I think this is a very beneficial experience, and it's helping me to plan my career. Cisco's Networking Academy is not only at Laurel High School. There are more than a million students just like me, working with over 3,000 teachers all across the U.S., studying internet and communication technologies, and building our futures. So we're happy to present what Cisco offers to our students. It's another opportunity. There are kids who walk around the hallway and don't know what they want to do right now. And seeing that presence everywhere they go, wow, I saw the wall of fame, can I get up on that wall? What do you guys do in that classroom? That kind of thing makes us proud to put that out and say, wow, with the opportunities that we have from Cisco, it's been great. I see it as sort of a motivation. I see like we're using those skills and we can go out and do something big in the world. I may be just one student, but I know I am making a difference. And when I think of the power of millions of others, just like me, all across the world, studying, learning, and helping others, now that really is a dream come true. There's an African proverb, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Wherever you want to go, Dimension Data and Cisco can help you get there. Together, we use the power of technology to help clients around the globe and the communities they live in. We add digital connectivity to the world's most grueling mountain bike race and give bicycles to hundreds of kids who can't get to school on time by walking. We protect businesses from cyber attack and data theft. And we make sure no one harms the few remaining rhinos on our planet. We're dedicated to humanizing hospitals and improving patient care. And giving hospitalized children a chance to see their friends and attend school with their classmates. We provide the latest in network technology and the education to use it. And we help educate young girls by stimulating creativity, collaboration, and innovation. We're working to improve networks across our ever-shrinking globe and expanding our understanding of the universe. Every project and action make a difference in the lives of those around us. Let's go far together. So now we ask you, what can we do together? Cisco and Turbonomic have been working together since 2012. And today I'm pleased to announce our joint solution with Turbonomic and Cisco Network Assurance Engine. This joint solution enables optimal workload placement across multi-cloud environments. Cisco Network Assurance Engine generates events that helps Turbonomic make better decisions around the placement of workloads. As demand for these workloads change, Cisco Network Assurance Engine provides data that helps Turbonomic optimize the placement of these workloads in a hybrid cloud environment. Our mutual roadmap is very exciting. In the future, we'll move into advanced use cases like compliance and high availability. Cisco Network Assurance Engine provides deep network intelligence to the Turbonomic solution. This intelligence allows us to make much better decisions on how to optimize workload across data center environments.
Wow, building a modern hybrid architecture with Google Cloud, another fantastic innovation showcase. Bravo, Alan Name, uh, product manager with Google Cloud. Mandy is on her way right over there to interview Alan. We're going to talk with him and dive just a little bit deeper here in our TV broadcast. Uh, for those of you watching, did you enjoy that? We hope you did. If you did, please write to us about it. Make a nice post using hashtag CLUS, whether that's on Facebook or Instagram, Twitter, however you like to communicate with us, use that hashtag, make sure that you hit us. We want to hear your thoughts. Remember, we told you uh, at the beginning of the day about Cisco Live Correspondent. If you are a good writer, if you've got a, a good knack for turning a good story or a good turn of phrase, our social media team is looking for you. We want to bring you on board with us here at Cisco. Now is a perfect opportunity to take advantage of that. So let's talk just a little bit about what's going on here with Google Cloud. You know, from minute one, for the first minute of Cisco Live, um, we looked at Chuck Robbins up there on the stage, and what do you know? There is uh, Google Cloud CEO Diane Green talking to us, right? This is a phenomenal, relatively new relationship. This just kicked off last year. So when you take a look at the nature of the partnerships by over 300 people out here on the floor, this is a brand new partnership with Google Cloud, and we did it in order to work together to help enterprise customers build hybrid cloud environments that are more consistent across GCP and to help customers with their on-premise data centers. You know, this powerful partnership, it's really enabled by Kubernetes. Uh, Google created Kubernetes for its own use about a decade ago. They open sourced it in 2014, the rest, is beautiful history. Uh, so many great benefits here. When we look at the partnership with Cisco, that helps Google Cloud achieve its own market ambitions. Right back for us here at Cisco, we want to continue to drive leadership in software and in services. Well, Kubernetes is the hottest thing in enterprise infrastructure software today, so it's a great, great mutual benefit. So I'm looking down into my monitor right now, and my friend Mandy Schneider is in the Innovation Showcase with Alan and Mandy. This is the first time we've had an opportunity to send you into the Innovation Showcase for one of those interviews. So, uh, how's it looking to you out there? Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, and it's right? My favorite colors. <laughs> but that's true, I'm standing here with Alan from Google Cloud. And Alan, what exactly do you do with Google Cloud? Yeah, hi Mandy. I'm a product manager at Google. I work on uh, Google Kubernetes Engine. We're the team behind Kubernetes. And uh, my role is really focused on our partnerships, on our go-to-market strategy. A lot of the announcements here around Google and Cisco, around our hybrid strategy, is really work that uh, myself and my Cisco counterparts have been working on uh, for the past year. Excellent. What's unique about the Google and Cisco relationship that enables customers to modernize and innovate? So as you know, Kubernetes has really been on fire and part of the challenge that our customers find is really getting started with Kubernetes outside of cloud. And Google and Cisco have gotten together to really simplify that process. Cisco is well known as a leader around networking and security and Google is a leader in open source technologies and developer. So we We've brought these two areas that we lead the market in together to provide a best of breed solution for customers that want to go down the hybrid path with cloud native and containers and Kubernetes without having to make sacrifices on existing investments that they've already made over the years. So Cisco really takes a lot of the great open source technologies that Google has built and makes it real on-prem, and then Google provides the cloud that easily integrates with the Google, uh, with the Cisco on-premise environment. So we think that it's, it's really a match made in heaven. It's really an opportunity to bring the developer and the administrator and the operator together in ways where they're working very closely together and building great applications. Excellent, I love that. Uh, it's on fire. <laughs> We've recently heard about all the major cloud providers offering a Kubernetes service. How is Google's Kubernetes offering different? Yeah, that's a great question, Mandy. Kubernetes, um, yes, I'll say it again, Kubernetes is on fire. Um, you know, it's great to see the adoption across all the major cloud providers. 
Google, Google developed Kubernetes, and when you look at the community that's supporting Kubernetes, over 40% of the contributors are Google employees, and these are the same employees that, that are building uh, Google Kubernetes Engine. So Google Kubernetes Engine has been a generally available product for over two and a half years. This is our DNA. Uh, we've been running, managing, operating containers at scale for the last decade. We know how to run these types of environments better than anyone else. Um, I do believe that we have the best cloud on the planet for running containers. And, and as our developers and, and customers use Google Kubernetes Engine, um, they quickly realize that. Because it's not just about getting Kubernetes up and running, but it's who's actually going to maintain and support your environment and provide you the SLAs that you need to run your mission critical applications in the cloud. And this is something that Google does better than anyone else. Excellent. Now, you referenced the term open several times in your talk. Can you elaborate on why this is an important part of Google Cloud strategy? So openness is really what's differentiating the world of today with the world of yesterday. Um, when, you, when you look at the evolution of cloud over the last couple of decades, you'll find that a lot of the drivers that people were seeking, like reducing costs um, or, or basically looking at ways of providing more simpler environments and, and consistency was very much based on proprietary software. Even cloud today in the mode one world represents some level of lock-in. Google Cloud truly believes that customers should be able to move to the cloud at their own pace. And to accomplish that, you have open source technologies that enable you to be able to get the best of both worlds. Um, you know, we feel that having an open technologies gives you the benefit as a customer or a partner with being able to have uh, applications that are entirely portable. And that's a very hard thing to do. The, the amount of adoption today that we're seeing in the industry around open software has been uh, dramatic and uh, we are going to continue just like we've done over the last uh, 10 years to push a lot of what we do best into the open source world and uh, really uh, enable developers and operators to innovate. It sounds like you just really want to make it easy for them, much Absolutely. more simple. Absolutely. Now, what's next for Kubernetes? So Kubernetes is becoming, or has become, the de facto standard uh, for container orchestration. And, and what you're going to start seeing is really um, around the cloud native ecosystem, more and more tooling be built on top of Kubernetes. I think one of the trends that we're starting to see is um, ISV, in independent software, software vendors are starting to rebase on top of Kubernetes more and more tooling around um, the continuous integration, continuous delivery is, is starting to uh, roll on top. Um, you know, networking tools, policy tools like Istio are, are becoming more operationalized. Um, all these various layers are going to start to expand and be built on top of Kubernetes, as well as um, you know, the, the, the idea of, of more adoption from outside cloud I think we're, we're going to start to see, um, you know, people running Kubernetes for uh, production, very much uh, mission critical production workloads. There's improvements coming along in the project around multi-tenancy uh, so that you can take advantage of every ounce of compute and resource in your clusters. So exciting times. We're, we're still in the beginning. Yeah, it does sound exciting and it's on fire. Yes, it is <laughs> on fire. <laughs> So last question, what do you recommend our viewers go do? So if you're a, uh, a Cisco customer, please contact your Cisco rep and ask them about uh, Cisco Container Platform. Learn more about how you can run Kubernetes uh, in your environment and learn about uh, Google Cisco offering from your Cisco reps, especially as it pertains to uh, you know, consuming the cloud and building applications that are distributed and hybrid. I think there's a lot of really good things uh, that, that you can 
uh, take advantage of today. If you're looking at building uh, cloud native applications in the cloud, uh, go to Google's website, Google Kubernetes Engine. As I said in my talk, one API call gives you a Kubernetes cluster that you can start running and deploying applications in. Uh, check out kubernetes.io for learning more about Kubernetes. Follow me on Twitter. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of material on YouTube uh, that really goes into quite a lot of detail on everything that I talked about in my session. And finally, try out Google Cloud. And uh, our annual cloud event is happening July 25th fourth in San Francisco. It's called GCP Next. If you're in town, come on by and check it out. Thank you so much, Alan. It was a pleasure. Back to you, Steve. So much, Mandy, Alan, really appreciate it. You know, Cisco is really widely known for creating and developing innovative industry-leading technologies. Now, we've got a great relationship with CDW and it's taken that to the next stage, really pushed that innovation by building customizable end-to-end -end solutions using Cisco products that help to really push those limits of the technology uh, and integrate those into our customers' IT environments. We are solving those unique business challenges. Uh, my friend Annie had an opportunity to sit down with Bob Rossi. Why don't you go ahead and uh, watch this great interview with CDW. We'll see you back on the flip side. Hi everybody, I'm here with Bob Rossi, the Vice President of Networking, Digital Workspace, and Security Solutions at CDW. Bob, that's a really long title. Really what does is. that mean? It really is. You know what, I'm responsible for about 300 architects that work on the pre-sales side, working with our account managers, as well as customers on a day-to-day -day basis, designing solutions. 300 architects, yeah. CDW, gold partner with Cisco. What does that mean? I mean, quite frankly, we've made a huge investment in the partnership, where we have um, all the certifications required to be able Fantastic. to deliver technologies for Cisco. Excellent, excellent. So when you talk about all those certifications, that means you have a certain number of CCIEs yes. already with CDW ready to go yep. helping our customers out. Excellent. So what are some of the things that you are going to talk about at this year's Cisco Live? So a couple of things, you know, we're really excited to talk to customers about security. It's a huge pain point that customers have today. Everywhere. Everywhere, every solution that we're talking about, the beginning, the middle of a solution, even in deployment, security has to be pivotal with regards to uh, what they're focusing on with a solution. Um, additionally, we're looking at um, having a lot of conversations around uh, collaboration. Right. You know, if you look at the, the, the changing landscapes where meetings take place, yes. it's not just everyone sitting around a conference table, sure. using WebEx teams, using, using WebEx rooms for international calls, calls across state lines. The capabilities there are really incredible. Yeah. Um, additionally, if you look at just this whole digitization effort, um, we're excited to talk to customers about how they can make that journey to this, this digital world from an analog world. Yeah, talk to me more about that. When we talk about digitization, when we talk about moving from analog to digital, it's no longer talking about being paperless, isn't it? Not at all, not at all. I mean, it's that was, that was yesteryear, and I'll tell you, it's really exciting to work with customers. We have business architects in our digital transformation transformation practice that work with customers to try and understand what are those priorities or initiatives and then work in what technology is going to help them get there. So soup to nuts, we're not talking about just collaboration, just security, just networking. We're talking about how that all fits together when they talk about digitization. Yes. If it's everything, it's ringtone, it's sensor data, it's it's analog, it's bandwidth, it's WAN, all of those pieces. It is, and it's just, you know, every day, you know, millions and millions of more devices are being added to the network. More devices that have to be connected and more devices that have to be secured from the bad guys. As we see this explosion of just devices coming onto the network, what are some of the pain points that you're seeing that are kind of becoming a trend amongst all of your customers? Well, it's a, it's a great question. It's tough for IT to keep up. You know, if you look at it, probably the number one issue I think is going to be around security. You know, okay. making security sure there's again. a strong, strong security posture, making sure that each device is managed appropriately for that user's profile. And additionally, you know, if you look at the costs associated with the breach are far past just keeping it hidden. It's it's become a CEO issue, a board issue, really a, an investor issue. So looking at some of these, you know, massive deployment security has to come back to the priority. Yeah, so that's why it's a whole architectural approach, right? We can't just say, hey, here's our architecture, by the way, we bolted on security for you. Right. 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 Okay, absolutely. Is there anything else that you would like our customers to know when they come to the CDW booth? 
Well, we're located at booth 1037. We're really excited to have these conversations with our customers. Um, we've got an army of engineers here today that have uh, been having conversations with customers this week. Um, and we're happy to work with them on their, uh, their issues that they're having in their organization and how you know, our long-standing partnership with Cisco that we're super excited about, mm -hmm. how we can help them with those business needs. Thank you so much, Bob, for coming down and talking with us. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Bob, and thank you, CDW. We're heading right to Kip Compton and delivering on the promise of powering a multi-cloud world. Across we go to the Innovation Showcase. Hello again, and next up is Kip Compton. Kip is the SVP of